would be great. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. I am Cynthia Hawkins, gallery director and curator at the Bertha Letter Gallery at SUNY Geneseo. Thank you for joining us for um, our inaugural artist interviews for the Bertha Letter online gallery. And as you are all aware that COVID-19 has changed our daily lives and work lives. This uh, artist interview is one of the silver linings that will provide long lasting documentation of the art programming at the College Gallery. I am going to uh, let um, roll images of Leslie Stroh's paintings while we talk. Okay. Um, so this is the first online exhibition of fall 2020. This new venue uh, will uh, begin with Between the Moors and the Sea by Leslie Strohs. Uh, by, um, for the sake of transparency, Leslie used to teach at SUNY Geneseo in the art department and exhibited with us uh, in faculty shows, and I think perhaps individually, did you? I remember okay. photography. Yeah, that's true. So, um, for, so welcome, Leslie. Thank you, hello. <laughs> Would you um, start off by telling us about a little about your background, why you decided to be an artist, how that came about, where? and your progress toward this um, goal. Okay, um, gosh. I think I always wanted to be an artist. Um, for me, growing up, uh, I had dual loves. I had a few different loves. I loved all of the arts, um, but visual art was one of the first that I just became enamored with. And I was very fortunate to have a mother who really uh, supported my brother and uh, and me in whatever endeavor we wanted. So as soon as I showed a proclivity to art, she, uh, she arranged private oil painting lessons when I was six years old, which was pretty, pretty incredible. So um, from the age of six through 12, I was really fortunate um, because of my mother, really, to be able to take private oil painting lessons with um, a retired illustrator uh, named Hugh Tinman, um, where I worked. And uh, that was probably the, the best art training that I had in all, all of my life, really. <laughs> if I think back to those years, uh, I don't even think I fully appreciated how rare of an opportunity that was. Um, but I continued with art. Uh, taking art all through high school. Um, I started university at University of Illinois um, at Urbane-Champaign-Urbana in medical illustration. Um, and then I took a few years off. I moved to the West Coast, lived in California for a while, uh, eventually settled in um, Tucson. I knew like my end game plan was to go to the University of Arizona. So I started there in just illustration and creative writing. Um, I was nearly finished uh, with my degree. And um, for one of my art history uh, courses, I had to take, um, well, I chose to take uh, the, art, the art and archeology span of ancient Greece. And I became completely enamored with that culture as well. So I changed my major. I ended up with a dual major in classics um, and just plain studio art and, um, continued with that, eventually went on to get a master's degree uh, in art education, and um, also did a lot of work continuing always in creative writing. So um, I did a lot of creative writing in graduate school as well. I did a lot of marrying of the two, of visual art and uh, creative writing, bookmaking, um, uh, arts education, using all of the arts, uh, theater, music, uh, visual art um, and dance, not that I'm a dancer, but just to help teach 
um, the general core curriculum because I did have that background in teaching English as well. So before I taught at SUNY Geneseo, I taught at um, SUNY Brockport and I had a four year visiting assistant professorship in the art education program there working as a liaison between the Arts for Children program and the art department. So I taught courses in drawing um, and just general visual art, but I also taught uh, courses in teaching teachers how to teach art <laughs> uh, or how to teach through the arts. So how to use visual art to teach things like English and history and science and maths. So, um, so that was my background. I've always um, loved art and uh, it wasn't really until um, I taught at Geneseo that I was able to, to have the time and the space just to produce my own work. For a long time, it was just um, teaching people to do art or teaching people how to teach through art. And um, having that space uh, at SUNY Geneseo teaching uh, oil painting and drawing was fantastic. It was a dream, really. It was a, a real shame when the department um, closed due to budget cuts, but um, but my husband is British and we took that opportunity to move to England. And so since I've been here, I've been able to build uh, a private oil painting uh, studio where I, I marry teaching with painting. And also since I've been here, I've just completely fallen in love with plein air painting, um, which is a new thing for me. I was, my art was always very um, focused on traditional skills, um, mostly in portraiture was my favorite, um, traditional skills in painting. So uh, taking a long time to do a painting. And alla prima, for anybody who doesn't know, is it means painting all at once. And plein air painting means painting in the open air. So what plein air painting does really is it marries the two things. So you're painting outside, you have to complete a painting you know, usually within the space of a few hours, although sometimes you can cheat a bit with that and take it to back to your studio and do some finishing touches. But it's been a new love for me, really, since I've since I've lived here. And then Cynthia, because we've stayed friends, um, was you were kind enough to invite me to present some of the plein air paintings that I've been um, working on over the last few years. So that's an introduction, a very lengthy one, but I'll let you, <laughs> I'm sure you have some questions. And Yeah, so I, um, one of the things I find really interesting about these paintings uh, is like within the, in a way, sort of limited scope of the landscape, which we know is not really limited, but within that, there's this a very interesting uh, the way that you divide, organize your canvas. The uh, compositions are, seem to me to be pretty, you know, dynamic in that there's a um, sort of like a lot of activity that happens and movement through the way you, you know, construct your, your uh, paintings. So um, do you look for specific, uh, say, I'll say formats, landscape type formats to, to paint or are they, um, and are they literal? I mean, is there a sense of like, do you like play with the, uh, the views that you see to like reshape them for, for your painting or is it, straight yeah a, a lot a lot of um sorry my dog is pitching in if you in the background um a lot of plein air artists are very um creative uh in terms of uh, i don't like that lamp post so i'm not going to put it in um or or they'll move elements i don't really move elements so much um although i will leave elements out if i feel they're not conducive to the overall composition. But um, to touch on the first part of your question, I really put a lot of time into the composition. So if I am not, when I choose a scene, 
it can be anything that moves me. So sometimes it will be, often it'll be the, the way the light is hitting something. Um, but sometimes, especially living, uh, we live in the southwest of England, we live in Devon, um, and it's just absolutely beautiful here. So you can't really leave the house very far without seeing a beautiful scene. Um, that said, when we are viewing the world in a three-dimensional format, it doesn't always translate on paper um, as effectively. So I try to always think about composition as a teacher. Um, I think the things that I really str uh, strove to impress upon my students, which is something I try to practice in my art as well, is it's kind of, it's all about the value and it's all about having a solid composition. And if you have those two things right, there's a lot of forgiveness if your color's wrong. It's, you know, that doesn't matter as much as long as you have um, an accurate representation of, of value that is, um, that is balanced. Um, and if the composition is appealing. So little things like the composition shouldn't be in the center, you know, the horizon line shouldn't be in the center. I try to think of, of kind of having all parts of the, uh, of the painting be lively, have, a, have, a, you know, a rhythm and a fluidity in the way that the eye moves around the piece. So thank you for noticing that. <laughs> I, I really like this after the hike too. Let me see if we can take a back look at it last viewed and mm. pause it here for a minute that's one of my favorite ones i have to say that um, every painting has a story which is which is true for any art but the thing that um that enchants me the most about plein air painting is that i can look at a painting that i did and i am transported back to that time and place because i'm there when i'm painting it um, I've, I've fallen in love with the scene. I'm immersed in it. I have the wind, you know, in my hair. I can smell the smells. Um, I can see everything vividly in a way that you can't do in a photograph. And so this one, um, this is a, a very famous place in Dartmoor National Park, which is near where I live. Um, and on the right is a, a very famous monument. It's called Haytor. Um, and you can't really get the scale of it from this from this little tiny picture, but my my dog and I um, did a huge hike up to Haytor, and it's very it's a huge incline. Uh, it takes a while to get up there. So w before I did the painting, I took her on a huge hike all the way to the top, and then a huge hike down, and then she was tired. So I had just a tiny little Peshad box in my car. I kind of drove to an area with. The wind and you know rolled the window down and was painting that one I painted in my car, um, looking at the this famous monument that we had just walked, and um, I, it was just marvelous. And midway through, you know there are wild cows and wild sheep and wild um, ponies in the moors, and so like, these cows just went ambling, <laughs> ambling right by the car. I didn't even notice them. I was so immersed in it, but. And this painting is one of the ones where it just kind of, it just came together really quickly. I, I would say I spent only about an hour and a half to two hours on this particular really, one. Really beautiful. I love the way that the purples move through, right? So yeah. They move you from the back down to the front of vice versa. And there's a lot of light in it. I love it. Yeah. Thanks. And you have yeah, no sense of how big it is at all. I mean, you have a sensation that is larger probably than it is. So that is really. So let me ask you about the difference between um, your handling of your media from watercolor to the oil paint. Mm. Because um, your watercolor, which I see you also do an ink drawing first or what? Um, the watercolors really just, they're just sketchbook drawings, the ones that are in this exhibit. Um, I think that drawing practice is essential for any artist. I love drawing. Um, practicing drawing to me is like doing stretches before exercise. So, um, so this really, this style 
or these paintings just really are me focusing on composition and drawing first. Um, so I, I start all these uh, in pencil. Uh, they're pencil drawings first, then I go in with ink and then um, and then and then watercolor. So they're line and wash. And this one that you have up right now, Bridgetown, that's one of the first ones. And um, I think I progressed a bit. You know, I was very simple in the early days, not really putting much time at all into the watercolor, having the focus be more on composition and drawing. Um, as I've continued doing these these drawings, I'm I'm more immersed in the watercolor and getting that better, getting the value better in the watercolor, not relying as much on the drawing. Um, but I love them both for different reasons. Uh, oil painting, in some ways, it's it's more work because you have to get the gear out. Um, but in a lot of ways, it's easier. Um, <laughs> and then sometimes I find. Conversely, sometimes I find that I just want to do a sketch in a watercolor because that feels easier on that particular day. I find for me, um, I was trained as an oil painter. Um, watercolor is not something I've ever taken a course in. I think it shows for any real watercolorist looking at my work, they would probably have a lot to say. So I just try to keep it what it is. I just try to be honest with it and explore different techniques. The, I've got to say the paper on my watercolors in the exhibit as well, it's not good paper. It's just, um, it's all of these are done in a moleskin sketchbook, mm -hmm. one of these. And, um, and the paper is not cotton. Um, I've since learned that, you know, there's just a world of difference in what you can do with watercolor when you're using a, a really good ground. So using 100% cotton, which is, I'm still kind of like, I want to finish this sketchbook. I still have a few drawings to do in there. And then I've, I've purchased already 100% um, cotton sketchbooks that I plan to use exclusively. And if I do a loose um, watercolor and, and ink, I, I do use cotton only. Because you can see, like, I just get stuck, not to criticize my own work, but just, you know, I'll put the sky down and it just, I, I won't be able to move the paint in the same way. So I look at my watercolors, I see a million things I want to change, but, um, but for me, they're just, again, try, I want them to just be a lighthearted expression of a moment yes. and not too married to technique. So even in this one, you know, I love the diagonals that you use in the work because it really impacts, you know, to me, you know, impacts the way I receive it, you know, and, and I think also that the, even though, you know, it's not the best paper, you really get your point of card. So let me ask you, you know, doing the landscape, the, and the plein air and the watercolors and so um it, is there anything that you are trying to say with your work that is sort of um that you would like like us to know that is like beyond the painting itself saying um that's a really good question cynthia i for me i feel that i want to record moments in time um and that really drives my work now i grew up and you did as well many people watching this will have been in the same uh same era in a time where conceptual art was considered true art you know the realism of the older days was considered you know great art at that time but we've moved on um the phrase is often bandied about like anybody can draw you know a face or a, a building and i grew up with that and i internalized that for a long time um i found professionally as well um, especially teaching at universities that idea of if you are a realist you're not to be taken seriously so you know in other words like what are you saying what does your art mean um how are you pushing boundaries? And I've always found as an artist and as a, as a teacher that you have to learn the basics first. So, um, so for me, I've always had this uh, kind of obsession with becoming as good at craft 
as I could and making sure that my students had the tools to understand craft and then they can go off and do whatever they want to do, but they know what they're doing. Um, you know, if they're mixing a color, they're mixing it deliberately. Um, or if they see a color and like, oh, I want to put this color somewhere, they can do it. Or if they want to draw a scene, for instance, of, you know, houses and people, they, they know how to do that. Um, and so for me, um, I'm, I'm kind of digressing a bit here, but to kind of steer it back towards that question, discovering this plein air movement, um, and it, it's, it is a movement, especially in the U.S., not as much world, well, probably worldwide as well, but um, it was like finding my tribe for me. Um, these are people who are painting and drawing the landscape, and they're not trying um, to do much more than be storytellers of a moment. Um, and that's not to say that they don't play with their play with materials and do different things. They do. There are many wonderful artists who are uh, just doing incredible work and pushing boundaries. Um, but for me, I want to record the world that I see. Um, and I think we take for granted that things are always going to be the way they are. Um, and things are changing all the time. I'm sitting here in my studio, my little top floor studio in my house, and there are all these beautiful hills. Like you can't see them, but that's my view as I'm talking to you. I'm looking at these hills, and these hills are in danger of, um, of a development, in impending danger. They may not be there in 10 years, and that's the case all over the world. So I especially want to record these things that I'm seeing and do them in a way that isn't just a photograph, um, but, but that kind of convey the feelings that I have about them. So I'm trying to be a bit loose and be maybe a little bit romantic, um, not sappy, but uh, just to record these buildings and these hills and vistas the way that I feel about them. And, and put that down. Um, yeah, and oftentimes I'll leave out cars or things that date something because I think these buildings, especially in this particular painting, which, uh, you, which you have here, um, they're timeless. They've been there centuries. Um, there are many artists who will put vehicles in and that I completely respect that. I. I'm really drawn to architecture. I wanted to be an architect when I was younger. I didn't have the confidence to really explore that. But one of my hobbies as a young girl was just, I would buy architecture books and I would just pour through them and study the floor plans. And, um, and I just love buildings. So um, I'll put people in, um, I'll put animals in, but I try to steer away from cars. I'll even put in, occasionally I'll put in like power lines and, and things like that. But I'm not somebody who's drawn to the industrial landscape. Um, I'm really drawn to architecture and landscape, uh, animals, people. Uh, that's, yeah, gonna that, those are the things that move me. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the photograph versus the, uh, the painting, the plein air. Because uh, I, I mean, I agree with you that um, photograph does not impart any kind of emotional or kind of spiritual sensation of one's relationship to the land. You know, to me, mm -hmm. that's my, you know, I, I have, we showed a bunch of photographers last year, I think it was last year, and I learned a lot from them because they were all really different. Yeah. But still to see like this painting and to have a photograph of this painting, I think, you know, is a world of difference in one's response to, to the site. Yeah, there, I mean, there are many amazing photographers doing things that are well far beyond my expertise. Um, and I, love photography. I, I personally, I mean, my medium is drawing and painting. My media are drawing and painting. Um, I'm able to tell a story through those things. Um, I'm able to impart 
just my feelings better in that forum. So, um, yeah, I, I love the freshness, um, the timelessness, especially of oil painting. Um, and for me, the thing that I really love about plein air paint, I, I've never loved painting as much as I do uh, since, since I've moved to England, really. It's just been um, a real awakening and a period of discovery for me, um, just have, having the space to, to delve into these things, um, the, the endlessly inspirational landscape um, not that I don't find inspiration in the U.S., I do as well, but this is just where I discovered plein air painting, so it speaks to me, it, it resonates in a different way. Um, for me, because, because I really espouse technique, um, before plein air painting, I, th I think I, th I put too much thinking into my work for my own good. Um, and I would often make things too stiff as a result of it. And, you know, when you only have a few hours to complete a painting, something's got to give. So I can't be as detailed and as perfect as I want to be. And, um, and I, I think it's made me a better artist that um, also being the difference between painting or drawing from a photograph versus real life is, um, you can see everything and everything looks completely different um, to your naked eye. I mean, everybody has probably had the experience that they see something and they're like, oh, I've got to take a picture of it. And then the picture just doesn't look anything like what they saw. Um, and I certainly have like rolls of photographs on my camera uh, and on my hard drive of, of things that just really don't do justice to what real life was like. And I find that I'm able, um, from painting in the landscape, I can see things better. I can see the shadows, they're more vibrant. The, I see the, the differences in color. Um, the composition is stronger. It's not skewed by the lens of a camera. Um, and also I think um, it's made me a better artist when I do work from photographs, which I do. Um, you know, the weather's not always great. I don't always have the motivation to wanna to be outside, but the, um, the learning and the information that I gather is able to be transcended from being in the landscape to painting from a photograph. I, I, I can, I, when you do it enough, I kind of know the things that I don't see in a photograph, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so for any artist, I mean, I just really advocate, even if you don't want to be a plein air artist, paint and draw from life because it will teach you more than any class Really, I know. I was in Wales a couple of years ago and took hundreds of photographs. And when I look at them, they don't mean anything. <laughs> being there, that they meant something. These sight, these scenes meant something. So, for in closing, I mean, do you think it's important for an artist to have uh, influences? Are there any artists that you think would be helpful to someone who's like getting into beginning plein air painting or landscape painting? that they might be helpful or is it really the doing, you know? Uh, well, I mean, you know me, I'm a teacher, so I advocate teaching and, and learning and I'm still always learning as well. I have many people who I um, will buy their videos or sign up for, um, like uh, I haven't signed up for any classes recently, but um, there is an artist who I really love. Her name is Kathy Odom and with the pandemic, she um, she did some online demos. She did a series of eight online demos in real time where she uh, was just painting and talking about her process and her colors. And um, for me, that is just, you know, continuously learning, no matter how good you are, is going to help you become a better artist. Um, Charlie Hunter is another artist. I think it's just incredible. Um, and, uh, I mean, there are, there are lists of modern contemporary artists who people can choose to take a workshop with or buy a video from um, if they specifically want to learn about 
you know, plein air painting, then I would, add, I would say you're in a great time in history because you have your pick of artists who you can um, actually take a workshop with or contact or uh, study with. Um, some of my favorites, um, uh, Shelby Keefe is another one. She's an artist in, based in Wisconsin. I love her work. Um, watercolor artist, Charles Peterson, um, is an older, he's uh, also a, a Wisconsin artist who I kind of grew up admiring his work. Um, he's not a plein air artist, but he does beautiful landscapes um, and he incorporates storytelling into his work. So I like that as well. Um, I think, you know, learn to draw and learn color. Uh, however you do that. I noticed a while ago, uh, several years ago, really, that many of the artists who I admired the most studied with an artist named Richard Schmidt. Um, and he has some, some books out. Um, they're a bit pricey, but they're worth it. And uh, he's just one of those living legends that um, people credit with having improved their work. So I would just say, get out there, go on Instagram, um, find artists, type in plein air artists, look, look for somebody whose uh, work moves you and then um, see if you can study with them. See if you can take a, buy a video of theirs, see if you can, um, you know, for study with somebody they studied with if they don't teach. I mean, that's often very helpful as well. But well, I want, again, I want everyone to know that you yourself are an extraordinary teacher because I would, it's what she did with students at, uh, the, in the art department at SUNY Geneseo, which was astounding. I was, I'm sorry I missed taking a class with you myself. <laughs> it was just amazing. And so in closing, you know, I really want to thank you for spending time with us and sharing your work and your methods, and your insight about painting and um i am so looking forward to your exhibit which will be on the letter online gallery hosted via Flickr. there'll be a link on the gallery's webpage to the exhibit and i hope that you get a lot of responses to it you thank your you. work deserves it thank you thanks so much cynthia i really appreciate the opportunity.